You've seen it. It's fine. And in those days, it was more than fine. Lamara and her family moved into the house and became the family. With everything she could do for the people of her community, though, Lamira was not able to save her two oldest sons. They died at age 52 and 56, only a few years before Bradish Billing died of a lingering illness. He was 83. And his death sparked a number of things. First, there was the will. Now, people were shocked. But if you just used your head, you'd see that there was really no alternative. My girls were very sensible and practical. And my boys, well, all of them liked to drink too much. And none of them had a practical bone in their bodies. Except maybe Samuel. Well, you could leave the farm and the businesses to any of them. So Radish left them to his daughters, mm. Sabra and Sally. Wow. People were shocked. Mm -hmm. They got the house and the land and the farm and, and quite a bit else. He left little things to his sons and his daughter, Myra. And of course, the girls were very generous with the brothers. They gave a little bit more. Now, the funny thing about my girls is they had never agreed. When they were this high, they disagreed. And all through life, they disagreed. And here they were going to run a farm together. But there really was no problem. The farm, well, you have to use your sense, and you have to do what's best for the farm. And they had no trouble figuring that out. So they could agree on that. But living together, <laughs> but they were, as I said, practical. They got a string. They opened the back door and the front door. And they took the string and they led it through the house. Mm -hmm. Everything on one side was Sabra's, everything <laughs> on the other side was Sally's. And even upstairs, the string went up the stairs. <laughs> Sabra walked on that side, Sally walked on that <laughs> side. <laughs> This part was Sally's and that part was Sapphire's. Sally didn't have a kitchen, and they certainly couldn't, couldn't work in the same kitchen. So a kitchen was built on Sapphire's part of the house. And they lived there for many, many years, running the farm very successfully. And me, I just walked from side to side. I sort of ignored it. If I wanted something over here, I got it. I crossed the, the line and went over here and got something. And I got along with everybody. One day, I discovered something. It was shocking. Not a single child of any of my tenants went to school. The school we built at Billings Bridge was too far. I talked to my girls about it. And they agreed something had to be done. So we cleared out an oak building and we set up a school. I was 71 and I started teaching. And I taught practically to the day I died. 12 years she taught. And then at the age of 83, Myra Dow Billing died. Her funeral was a testament to who she was in the community. Behind her coffin walked the moderator of the Presbyterian Church, the Bishop of the Anglican Church, the Bishop of the Catholic Church, in unison. And behind them, her five surviving children. Behind them, her grandchildren, and the whole community, rich and poor. Her third daughter, the one named for her, said at that funeral that her mother was a wonderful woman who lived, acted, and thought well ahead of the age in which she lived. Mm -hmm. The Myra Dow Billing. Mm -hmm. I want to make any comments. I think we left a few minutes.
we do have a few minutes, yes. Yes? Was she uh, a Dow of Dow Lee? Yes, yes that was her brothers. Okay. Oh, neat. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> she had a very difficult childhood. Uh, they were American, and they had a mill, and it burned down, and her father was killed. And uh, her mother moved a little bit, and she met somebody, and they came up here, and they got a farm, and they were doing very good. And then he died, and he didn't leave a will, and all the farm went to her, the oldest son, because that was how it was done in those days. And he wasn't very old. He was only about 16, and he, he liked what he liked. And, he saw something he liked, and somebody offered him a very small price for the farm. And he took it and bought what he wanted, and they had nothing. Mm -hmm. So his mother had these kids to raise, and including the son that was <laughs> supposedly. Anyhow, uh, somebody asked her to marry him, and she married him. And he was a very good man. And her mother was a very good Quaker. I think her stepfather was a Quaker, too. And uh, she was a Quaker. But when she married Mr. Billings, uh, he was, well, he wanted to be Presbyterian because that was the most important church in town. So they were Presbyterian. And the day he died, she went back to being a Quaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So do you have a lot of your information? Are there diaries? Or? She left diaries and she left letters. She left all sorts of things. And people have since her left things. That, most of them are right here. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, we're, and her daughters now, I guess they're deceased, but who's uh, left of the Billings family? I don't know if anybody's left. The last ones were... Uh, yeah, but they were about fourth or fifth line, daughters of the fourth or fifth line. Uh, and they were pretty old when they sold this house. I don't know if there's any left. So they sold this house to the, to the city, right? Yes. Yeah. And they built just down the street, but they're not there anymore. <laughs> they were two remarkable women. I had the privilege of did no <laughs> I ever know them? They were remarkable. They never married. They traveled a great deal, and every time they went to a new city, they would buy something for their house. And they had a room in this house over here, on the, on the, and it was a most wonderful room. It was a magic room, shelves uh, from their travels. And I would say, take me in and tell me about this set of dishes that they brought in Florence for their house. Mm -hmm. And they, they, it, it was such fun. They had a great storytelling. <coughs> and something about the two sisters, they would sit in, if I may just say, mm -hmm. they have, it's a bungalow on the next street over. And there's windows that you can see out. And they always, they had a beautiful living room, but they never sat in the living room. They sat in these two sort of summer chairs that you could sort of bounce up and down because they were very comfortable and easy to get in and out of. And one sister, it was May, yes, it was May, uh, loved Harlequin uh, novels. <laughs> and she must have had, she would have a pile on this side that she had still to read and the other side, the ones that she had read. <laughs> there were dozens of them. Maybe why she never got married. <laughs> grandchildren, oh, from other, from the, the other siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. And the, and the other sister the read the newspapers. At that time, we had the Ottawa Journal and the Ottawa yeah. Citizen. Mm -hmm. and, had, and she would read every single line of those up and down that she would go through. She was so knowledgeable, and they were very astute politically. You could gather which party they, they, they belonged to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I would always come with a little bit of gossip about some little political item that I knew that they hadn't seen in the paper. Uh -huh. And they were so pleased because that meant that they could phone some friends and tell them. <laughs> <laughs> they were remarkable women.